Nanotechnology is all around us. But what is nano exactly? How small is it? And why is it interesting? Well, a nanometer is defined as a billionth of a meter. To put that in a bit of perspective for you, it's about the distance that a Navy frigate will sink if a seagull were to land on it. It's a very small scale stuff. If you were to look inside your mobile phones right now, you're likely to find nanoscale electronic devices known as transistors. The current record for such things stand at about 20 nanometers. My PhD wants to push this down even smaller. I want to go down to two nanometers. Why? Well, the speed of computers and phones is pretty much only fundamentally limited by the amount of electronics and components you can squeeze into them. If I can make these smaller, I can put more in, and we have faster computers and faster phones, so everyone's happy. So what is it exactly I do then? Well, I work on a thing called filled carbon nanotubes. Now, a carbon nanotube is essentially a rolled up uh, sheet of carbon atoms, like a straw, made entirely of carbon atoms, just a few nanometers in diameter. These materials are very interesting in their own right. They're thousands of times stronger than steel and much lighter. But I'm not interested in the nanotube itself. I'm interested in filling it up. If you were to get an ordinary straw and stick it in water, plug up one end and pull it out, the liquid will remain in the straw. And we can apply the same kind of idea down on the nanoscale. We can get these nanotubes, stick them in uh, a molten metal or any other material, and we can bring it out and we'll have what we call a nanowire inside the straw. A wire that is just one or two atoms in diameter is the, pretty much the smallest possible electronic component you can imagine. So this is pretty interesting and great stuff for us. So why is this all sort of useful anyway? I mean, like, wh why do we want to make these? I've already said we want to get faster devices, right? That's what we're re really here for. And with these nano, nanoscale devices, they have a slight issue. The problem is these wires are different on the nanoscale than they are on the large scale. Picture it this way. If you were to get water and freeze it, it will expand outwards. Now, if you do the same thing on a nanoscale at the end of this tube, it will no longer expand outwards. The tube constrains it. It confines its way that it expands. It means it can only crystallize along the axis of this tube. And this creates an entirely different structure with entirely different properties from the bulk and large scale equivalent. And that's one thing my PhD aims to look at. I use various tools to characterize these nanowires. I want to look at how heat moves through them. I want to look at how electricity flows through them. I want to see how strong and durable they are as well, because if they break, if you just look at them, there's no point in making them, right? So that is one of the main purposes of my PhD. I characterize nanostructures and understand how this, the, the large scale changes down on the small scale. So keep your eye out in the future for nanotechnology, because it really is the next big thing that's really small. Thank you very much. <laughs>